Good day from the 65th Annual Cannes Film Festival. I'm Ian Roberts, and I'm presenting to you a program created by Paramax and Mund West, a program entitled Con Echo 2012 in partnership with Screen International. In our program, we have a unique opportunity to take a look into the world of film finance. Through a series of interviews and roundtables, we gain valuable insight from the leaders of the film finance industry and how they are bridging the gap between unique storytelling and the financial resources to make them become a big screen cinematic experience. In this edition of our Con Echo series, we have a unique opportunity to take a look at a film in competition entitled Lawless, starring Gary Oldman, Jessica Chastain, Shia LaBeouf, and Tom Hardy. We had the opportunity to sit down with the executives and the producers behind this film. Here's what they had to say. Let's take a closer look. Hello, everybody. I am here with a panel on the feature film Lawless. How did the project first come to you, Rob? Well, the project came to us uh, from one of the talent agencies, CAA, but uh, originally was optioned and developed by Douglas Wick and Lucy Fisher, who were the two lead producers on the film, who had optioned it um, under their studio deal, and had developed it over a course of three or four years before ultimately deciding that it was a better fit to make it independently which is then how he ultimately came to Cassian and I to help put together. And so what kind of a deal did you have to get into to get involved at that point? We had promised to bring the money, um, and, uh, and we were fortunate enough to do so. We found, we found some great partners for it. It was based on a book called The Wettest County in the World. It was a bestseller. Uh, what level of complexity did that add to the deals that you were putting together? I, I, well, a lot of it predates our involvement uh, from when Doug and Lucy may have first been trying to put it together and getting traction. I think, you know, the, the subject matter, it's tricky to get period films made as um, historically they haven't performed as well on a global basis. And this is a very American story being about prohibition and so forth. So um, I think there were some complexities to putting the film together related to the material in terms of like what the book was about more so than it being a bestseller versus not, you know. Now, I noticed that Nick Cave was one of the screenwriters on the project, and he's far better known for his being a composer and very prolifically so in the music industry. Can you talk a little bit about Nick being the screenwriter on this one and how that happened? Yeah, well, uh, John Hillcoat, uh, the director of the film, and Nick Cave are uh, very close friends and collaborators. Uh, Nick had previously written a screenplay for him called um, uh, the, Proposition. the Proposition, yeah. And so uh, they live next door to each other and they work together closely. And so, um, and Nick's clearly a very multi-talented individual, so. Interesting. Now, this was a pretty big budget compared to the last film that you two worked on together, which was Margin Call, in the 20 to $30 million range, as I understand no, it's it. it's $30 million. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how did you put that budget together? What were the compromises you had to make and consideration in going that high as, a, as opposed to your previous venture together? Well, you know, I think on every movie, there's never enough money. Uh, you know, if you were to ask uh, John or a lot of our crew, it was as helter-skelter of a production process as Margin Call, which was a much smaller film. Um, the period nature of the movie, some of the action sequences and so forth, um, you know, lends itself to, to being expensive to recreate. Um, the biggest, I think the biggest consideration is the amount of money that the, uh, the, the talent and so forth, we all, you know, us, <laughs> what, we, what we were able to take uh, in order to accommodate the budget. And, um, you know, more than anything, I think it was the creative choice of finding where we could shoot the film that had the right tax credit, enough tax credits for us to make the, uh, the budget make sense. Where did you shoot the film? We ended up doing it in Georgia, actually, um, which, you know, the film is set in Virginia, but um, we were able to get creative in setting some of those things up. Now, did you pre-fund the tax credit or did you, and cash flow it or did you? Yeah, we are, the financiers ended up cash flowing it as Georgia, it's a tax credit versus a rebate, which uh, requires that. Um, to be ultimately sold. So anyway, we, we cash flowed it and later sold it to monetize it. Rob, walk us through the finance plan for this picture. What did it look like by the, at the beginning and what did it look like at the end? Um, the beginning, the idea had been to 
pre-sell a lot of the international rights to the film and try to get a bank loan and pair that up with an equity financier. Timing-wise, because of the seasons and the, the actors' schedules especially, um, we had to go before we, we really had an opportunity to go out and do that. And so we were fortunate to bring in um, a equity financier of sorts who could act as the bank and put up money um, in sort of a, a bank position at a bank interest rate um, without having the, the pre-sales as collateral paired with the equity and then, of course, the tax credits. And pre-sales, my understanding is you only got one pre-sale from Canada. How did that affect the financing process for you? Well, it made it a little bit trickier. Unfortunately, we have one of the best foreign sales agents in the business who handled the film, that'd be Glenn Basner at Film Nation. So um, a lot of people um, have a lot of faith in his ability to judge the value in the international market. So let's talk about when it's rolling out in the uh, United States. When are we going to be airing? Uh, the end of August. Going to uh, be in theaters all across the United States? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many screens are we looking at? Uh, 1,500. I think 1,500 or 1,800. 1,500. You never really know. I heard the red carpet was a great success last night. Um, your first Lots red carpet now? First can red carpet. Um, quite, a, quite a bit of fun. Rob Cassian, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, from Sunny Can on the French Riviera, uh, we very much appreciate your actually being here with us. Thanks. Thank you for having watched our Con Echo series 2012. We've had a terrific time here in Con, and we look forward to welcoming you all in Toronto to watch our Toronto Echo series 2012.